sunflower oil in the market of all our sauces it's a healthier option and it's a very very fine oil that doesn't interfere with the flavour of our curry so to start off a nice good sized pot of about half a cup of sunflower oil you can be generous with the oil I'll tell you why later on and now we're going to add the onions water so as they cook they lose their fluid and reduce and this is where we want to try and concentrate the flavours it's a particular colour for the onions the garlic and the ginger that we look for and we'll come to that during the cooking process very important so that's our onions in we're then going to add about 100 grams of ginger freshly chopped going to add about the same volume of garlic and if you put extra garlic in I think that's great you can't overdose on garlic as far as I'm concerned I can't get enough of it it's very healthy for you so we can go so garlic I'm going to put in three bay leaves fresh ones which we're just going to tear to let them bleed the flavour into our sauce I'm also going to put in my chopped chilies at this point that will give them time to release their beautiful heat and flavours and settle down so they're not too much in your face by the time the curry is ready. So we're going to sprinkle those in. We're going to need to put in some salt. I like to put in salt at this stage because I feel we've got root vegetables in there and this is going to help break down the fibres and help them release their flavours. I always tell our pupils uh, to season as you go along and taste it taste great at all those stages of the cooking process your own result will be perfect a little bit of salt we're going to put the lid up let that cook now um, for five or ten minutes i'm going to add some seeds to it then and let it cook a bit further and we'll go through that process as we go along after about ten minutes of simmering away i'm going to add some whole spices i like to add whole spices they add a, an extra bit of texture to the curry and release the locked in flavors so we're going to add some cumin seeds, we're going to add some whole fennel seeds, I've got two or three pieces of cinnamon bark, which you can remove before you serve the curry, two or three star anise, there is delicious aniseedy flavoured spice and they're really sweet and delicious in the curry. Again, you can remove those if you want to before you serve your curry. We're going to add some whole cardamoms, that will give these time to soften and open up and release their flavours. And we add some whole coriander seeds. I love the bouquet that these give to a curry. And again, that, that whole spice texture I think is very important for this particular curry. So we're now going to put, um, put our lid back on and give this another five or ten minutes. We're looking for a nice sort of light golden brown colour which you could call caramelisation. That helps to lock in and release the sugars and all the rest of the flavours. So I'm going to put the lid on there and leave this to do its thing. Okay folks, um, the onions are looking really good now. They've caramelised nicely, we've got a great colour. The whole spices have been able to open up and let their flavours into the sauce. And I think the next stage now we're going to add the tomato puree and we're going to let that cook for two or three minutes and then we'll move on to our, to our next stage. So the colour changed dramatically as the tomato puree is stirred through the sauce. And as I said earlier, just needs a couple of minutes just to cook the tomato puree through. The tomato puree gives us a nice fruity flavour to your curry sauce. And I kind of like that combination. goes especially well with the chilies, this being a gel frazzi. So we're going to leave that to cook now for a couple of minutes and we'll come back to it after that. Okay, um, we put the tomato puree in, that's cooked beautifully. The colour and the smells are absolutely fantastic. So now it's time to add the rest of our powders and we're going to add now, um, these are methi leaves. 
or fenugreek leaves. Love the flower of these, got to call it delicate bokeh, great in a curry. We're going to add some uh, turmeric or haldi powder. That kind of helps with the colour. Um, not so much the flavour, but it's great for giving us that lovely sort of golden colour to the curry. And then we're going to add our special blend of powders. Now you can use garam masala, which is readily available. It's a mixed whole spice. Don't particularly like it. It's a little bit harsh and bitter. Um, I've developed our own blend of special powders here in Cornwall. We call it the Magic Mix. It is available online at www.thelittlecornishcurrycompany.com um, and that's what we're going to use now to finish our curry and we're going to add the powders and we're going to let that cook for a further five or six minutes. What that does is let the grains of powder open up and leach the flowers into the sauce and it won't make the sauce taste quite grainy in texture. Uh, we may need to add a little bit of water at this stage because of course when the powders are in they're going to absorb the liquid in the sauce quite quickly. Yep. The powders are in and then we're going to add a little bit of extra fluid as you can see it's gone a little bit gloopy but uh, we need to add, add some liquid to refresh it. Plain water is great. A little bit more. And I think that should be fine. Once that's stirred thoroughly, I'm going to put the lid back on and give it another five minutes or so on a very gentle simmer just to get those powders working their magic. Okay, our sauce has been simmering for a further five minutes or so now. The powders are beautifully integrated with the onions, and now it's time to add our fresh chicken. About 100 grams of chicken per person um, is normally enough. We like to use chicken breast for this particular dish as it cooks very quickly. So I'm going to add the chicken, stir that through. You have to keep an eye on stirring in a, in a concentrated dish like this. And I think we're going to give it about 10 minutes or so and the chicken should be plump and delicious and thoroughly cooked. Best to test a bit first before you start to eat it. But I'll give it about 10 minutes maybe. Okay, so the chicken's in. We're going to put the lid back on and uh, let the chicken cook through. Okay, um, this magnificent curry is nearly ready, the chicken's cooked beautifully, uh, the sauce is ready, and now it's time to add the final ingredients. This is the stage I like to call dressing the curry. Um, wonderful colours and textures that I think make all the difference. Uh, it's a kind of curry to impress your friends with. And what we're going to finish it with now are fresh chopped spring onions, chopped red and green pepper, I've got some whole cherry tomatoes. Now I kind of love these in a curry. We're going to put them in and leave them sit for a couple of minutes so they just get a little bit pliable but when you bite into a tomato in this sauce the flavours are so delicious and it, uh, it makes a difference. And of course no curry would be a curry without fresh chopped coriander. So I'm going to put these in because we're going to be ready to serve this curry very shortly. Here's our chicken gel frazzy, made in our Cornish kitchen workshop here in Cornwall, uh, served with classic naan bread and lemon rice. All these recipes are available online at thelittlecornishcurrycompany.com.